is Brittany here. Before you start that nine to five, we need to talk about your exit strategy and how you are going to effectively escape your nine to five without having to go back, have regrets, struggle, and email me saying how you quit your job because you had a good two, three month run and then everything started to decline. Now, I am sharing this from experience, guys. Um, when I quit my nine to five, Oh my God, this was back in maybe 2018. Um, I was selling $27 eBooks, right? How to start and grow a YouTube channel for $27. I was making about $5,000 a month and I was really young and I was excited. Then I decided to add one-on-one mentorship. So I was charging about $85 per one-on-one -on -one call. And I was just racking up that whole summer. I wholeheartedly relied on going live every day and promoting my digital products, which was my ebook on how to start and grow YouTube channel. And then my one-on-one -on -one marketing calls. And then after the summer, I feel like everybody just stopped investing. You know, the holidays came around and I didn't really know how to pivot. So I went back to work. Fast forward 2020, I was pregnant with my son. I quit my job at six months pregnant. And that's when I decided to take what I was doing in my career as a full-time social media manager in the corporate space and get my own clients as a freelancer. And that changed the game for me. After doing that for about... I want to say a good eight months um, managing my own clients and being a full-time freelancer in social media marketing. I decided to create my course where I was teaching other people how to freelance and become freelance social media managers, training and recruiting them. And that's what I've been doing ever since, guys. It's about to be 2025 and my course is still available. My one-on-one -on -one marketing calls are still available. I still have digital products within the marketing field. And you're not a breath, y'all. Y'all know I'm six months pregnant. My bad. Um, within the marketing field, I am still offering digital products. But if you are at a point where you're pregnant, you're newly married, your mental health is declining, um, you just feel like you're ready to step into that season and you want to escape your nine to five, we're going to talk about the more realistic, strategic approach to this journey, okay? Number one, the first thing I highly recommend is starting a side hustle related to your actual skills and what you're good at. So whatever you do for work, whatever you're passionate about, whatever industry or field you're an expert in, you are going to free freelance. So you are going to get your own clients and you're going to start that freelance work. I'm noticing on social media, a lot of people start freelancing and they think that they are automatically an entrepreneur and that they run a business. And that is absolutely not true. When you freelance, um, you are a beginner at lead generation and serving your own clients. When you freelance, you are your only employee. When you freelance, you don't have to fill out as much documentation. You may not even be writing stuff off of your taxes because you're still trying to figure out this exchange of your products or services um, to the consumer. And so freelancing is how businesses are birthed. Freelancing is how uh, entrepreneurs end up thriving and really figuring out their lane. But please remember that when you start freelancing, you're not a business owner. You're absolutely not an entrepreneur. So what you are going to do is write down the type of services or skills um, that you can provide to your customers, right? And this is going to be so important, guys. Really narrowing down what you are good at. It could be doing hair, doing lashes, doing nails, graphic design, uh, coaching, social media management, um, all types of things you can freelance for. So whatever you are useful for at work, someone may be able to offer you a fair rate um, an hourly rate to be able to freelance 
in this particular space. So for an example, if I wanted to freelance again, right, let's just say I started at zero, maybe I wanted to help real estate agents with their social media marketing, teach them how to run their own ads, teach them how to create their own content, maybe even like bridge the gap between some, um, videographers to be able to go to the different properties, some photographers to be able to go with them to the different properties to capture content for the homes that they are selling. Teach them about branding online. Make sure everybody is on LinkedIn, TikTok, and Facebook. Make sure they understand SEO. Make sure they understand how to look up their competitors, how to offer their personality and a more creative edge when it comes to them selling online, um, how to create a free lead magnet to generate new leads, figuring out what niche or their ideal client you know are they working with new families and millennials to be able to buy townhomes or are they working with more seasoned people looking to buy multi-million dollar homes because they have the budget they have the experience so as you can see you can freelance in a bunch of different industries offering a bunch of different services second thing digital products this one is so important if you want to take back more of your time and you want to rely on social media to be able to make sales. Um, digital product changed the game for me when I was pregnant, guys. You guys know I had preeclampsia. I was on bed rest. I had an emergency C-section. It was a lot when it came to my first pregnancy. And so my digital products, which were my actual eBooks and my course, really saved me and sustained me during that time when I didn't have the energy or the capability to show up um, my digital products did the work for me and all I had to do is promote 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 um, but when you are creating digital products stay off of chat GBT try not to buy other people's digital products to resell make sure it's authentic with my brand people understand that i do this for real i love to teach i've been in the industry for eight plus years i know what i'm talking about i have the testimonials and um, the case studies to back it up and so if you want people to come back again and again and again you want to make sure your digital products are meaty they're valuable, you're oversharing, you're giving very personal examples so they understand that this was written by you, this was created by you, and you know exactly what you're talking about. That way in the future, when you launch something that may be a little more expensive, maybe even a membership, um, which is another great business model, by the way, um, they trust you because they bought your 10, 15, 20, 30, $40 ebook. Now when you drop a course, they know it's going to be even better. Now when you host a live event, they know it's going to be impactful. So make sure you have a sense of pride um, about your digital products because that's something that we are losing in the industry right now especially in the marketing industry because everybody wants to resell done for you products and I just don't agree with this business model at all number two and there's two different points to this that I want to touch on and it's so important before you escape your nine to five you absolutely have to invest in self-development Guys, this is what's going to sustain you during those tough times and tough seasons when you're telling your family and friends that you are exiting your nine to five security, that consistent paycheck, those good benefits, when you're deciding to pivot, self-development is what's going to prove it's going to separate the freelancers from the bosses. It's going to separate someone who's just hustling on the internet compared to someone building an, an actual business. Self-development is the one thing, the one difference between me and a lot of other YouTubers, not to toot my own horn. So what does that look like? Acquiring new skills. When you quit your nine to five, you need to be able to do a bunch of different things, right? Now you become your own uh, video editor, your own graphic designer, your own social media manager, your own PR. Now you are in charge of your brand and your business, 
you are your bread and butter when you're hustling to wake up every day and make money you need a, str a strategic plan and the first thing you have to have is self-motivation and belief in your damn self nobody is slacking you to make sure you're online nobody is paying you at the end of this week nobody is holding your work ethic accountable you're not meeting with anyone. You are 100% in charge of your own income by your daily habits. You need to be reading more books. You need to be uh, listening to more podcasts. You need to be organized. You still need to wake up early or even stay up late. You need to be good at time management. You need to be locked in with your business and everywhere you go, you should be a walking billboard. When you are in charge or responsible for your own sales, guys it gets scary okay so um first thing you need to do is acquire new skills whether that's project management personal finance um marketing promotion social media i mean whatever you need to do to become better in your business or whatever products or services that you are providing you need to do it maybe you own a t-shirt line and you're noticing that the cost for production is starting to become a lot you may need to end up buying that printer and printing out your own shirt you may need to learn about your different options when it comes to shipping orders so you can keep more money in your pocket. I mean, it's going to take a lot of self-development. Second thing is building that personal brand. So when you escape your nine to five, I always recommend taking your followers along with you. We all know that the number one way to gain more sales is through social media. So making sure that you are getting better at uh, promoting yourself and branding yourself <clears throat> aligning with your business Mia Ray is very good at this she is the boss of Glamaholic Lifestyle um, Pinky Nicole is very good at this <clears throat> she is the owner of Slutty Vegan um, I'm trying to think Milano is very good at this Milano is the owner of Milano D. Rouge these are some bosses that you want to follow <clears throat> which brings me to my third point to network and build connections. In order to make a sale, people have to know what you have to offer. In order for you to stay motivated, you need to be around other bosses and people in the same season as you or people who are already where you want to be. Your friends are not going to help you get to the next level. Your family members are not going to help you get to the next level, especially if they're locked in in the corporate world, especially if they are chasing or working hard towards climbing the corporate ladder especially if they don't understand why you have two degrees but you still want to go and be a full-time influencer or content creator or, or business owner right nobody is going to understand the vision but you this is why you also need to work on discernment when it comes to sharing your why um, and what you're doing sometimes you just need to let your family watch from the sidelines you may need to allow your friends to just question why the hell you're doing this in the first place it doesn't matter the Lord gives you an assignment the Lord makes you uncomfortable and the Lord gives you a vision it's not up to anybody but yourself to make it happen and when you fail you can't blame anybody but yourself that's why I say you should shouldn't be sharing so much with your family and friends because the I told you so's is irrelevant it's irrelevant you are going to feel so empowered when you truly understand that you're on an assignment for an example, I've quit my job multiple times and then went back to the corporate space. And every time I went back to the corporate space, I felt like I had more leverage. I felt like I can walk into these interviews and, I, and I'm not like, oh, I need this job. I need this paycheck. I need these benefits. No. This position, I treat my jobs like, a, like another client. Why? Because I stay in the same industry that I'm freelancing in. I stay in the same industry that I'm building my own business in. My jobs, I always treat like a second client. They're paying me for a service that I provide anyway, whether I'm working for a corporate company or I'm freelancing. 
Either way, I'm a full-time social media manager. Either way, I have my own processes. Either way, the skills that I'm using, I use on my personal clients and my corporate clients. And it's funny because a lot of people, when they talk to me, they realize like, oh, she's so passionate about what she does. It's because I don't turn it off and on. I don't go to work and become an employee and then come home and become a boss. I'm a boss as soon as I wake up. Certain things I'm not willing to negotiate, right? So creating my own schedule, working remotely, only having a certain amount of clients, making sure that I'm still able to show up and be present for my son and my husband. I mean, when you truly gain the skills you need, it will help you in your nine to five career. That's why I say personal development, personal branding, um, and building those skills truly help you because if you decide to go back to work because life happens guys you may even decide you want to go back to work for one year just so you can go and get your next house or go and invest in your next real estate investment which i've done twice okay let's not forget i own two homes thank you um that's just something that you may have to do but when you are continuing to develop your skills and your brand that is going to help you and set you apart from people in the industry and from other entrepreneurs. Okay, so joining communities and finding a mentor are my top two tips when it comes to building connections and your network. So here in Atlanta, I attend basically everything and everywhere I go, people understand that I'm the social media manager to go to. Marketing by Monray, Nehemiah Davis, Milano, they have all reached out to me needing a social media manager. And either they're inquiring about my rates and services or they say, hey, Britt, I know that you train and recruit social media managers. Remember, guys, this is my course that I promote all the time. They're always asking me, do I have anyone that I recommend that I can refer? I feel good walking into a room, speaking on these stages, knowing that everyone understands that I'm good at what I do. And I even teach other people to do what I do and they trust me enough and my brand enough to inquire about the other ladies, the other people that I mentor and that I train. There's so many YouTubers out here that have courses. How many YouTubers have courses where people are actually asking, hey, from the group of people who have taken your course, who can I hire? That's a big deal. That means that I've branded myself, I've marketed myself, I've stamped myself in the social media marketing industry and people trust me. They not only trust me, but they trust the people who are coached under me. That's a huge deal. In my nine to five, do y'all remember, what was this, two years ago when I was flying to, within my corporate job, guys, they were flying me to host marketing and mimosas with Brittany in Dallas, in Atlanta, and in Las Vegas. Do y'all remember those vlogs? I was living the dream. I was making money for my courses. My students were making money. I was making money off my digital products. And I still had a nine to five where they were flying me to these uh, 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 trade shows to be able to teach social media marketing. Living my dream. That's why I say sometimes because we never know the season that we're going to approach. That's why when it becomes um, when it comes to self-development, finding a mentor, making connections in your industry, branding yourself with respect and integrity with your work, you know, what you're posting online, all of it matters because in my last nine to five, they all followed me on social media. I gained mentors within my nine to five because of the work that they seen I was doing outside of my, my role, my position. That's why it's so important to continue learning new skills, speaking up for yourself, understanding your elevator pitch. This is all the work that you have to do if you plan to escape your nine to five, because the goal is for you, of course, to not ever have to go back. But if you wanted to, if you wanted to, you have more leverage. You've branded yourself in the industry. It's a no brainer to hire you.
So next thing I believe we're on number four is to master your finances and create a safety net. We all know how important this is, especially as mothers, especially for those of you who are living alone. You know, you may not have people to rely on. Understanding what's your monthly budget and how much your business needs to make to be able to pay for itself and then for you to profit. As soon as you start hitting a consistent income or a consistent sales goal or whatever you wanna call it on a monthly basis, you should be saving 10, 15, 20% of that in an emergency fund. If you're making enough money, you should be putting yourself on payroll as an employee. That'll help you out when it comes to getting a car loan or getting a home loan. Making sure that you have all of your finances together. You may need to invest in a CPA. You know, you guys can reach out to my husband if you need your taxes done, if you have a small business, but making sure that you know your numbers. There are so many people who want to escape the nine to five, and the only thing they think of is, I need to make as much money as I make at work. I don't think that's true because at work, you're also getting health insurance. You're also, maybe they're matching you with your 401k, right? At work, that's how much you take home after taxes. Okay, if you're running an actual business, the goal is eventually for you to have your own employees, for you to build out a team. So I don't think you comparing how much you make at your nine to five to be your exit strategy, like your exit um, numbers or your exit budget, I don't think that's realistic because you should want to make double that, triple that to be able to outsource and build out a team. Second thing, reduce debt. I'm on my second kid. I'm six months pregnant. Y'all watched me pay off $10,000 in student, um, student loan. Well, I'm just lying to y'all. Y'all watched me pay off $10,000 in credit card debt the first time I was pregnant with my son. Now that I'm about to have my daughter and I'm six months pregnant, we're doing the same exact thing. So I reduced my gym membership. I reduced my phone bill, paying off all of my credit cards, making sure I have my emergency fund. I have cash in house, literally, physically. And then I have my actual high yield savings account with Amex making sure that I'm prepping myself. So when I am home and I'm just a full-time mom and I'm just home in this season of my life, I have security, you know, the money that's coming in from my course, from my digital products, from my views on these platforms, from my brand deals now, making sure that I understand my bottom line. What's the number, what's the minimum I need to make each month to be able to save, invest, and you know, pay bills, buy milk and groceries and blah, 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 blah. Keep myself like a fly, <laughs> you know? So making sure that you understand if you are wanting to escape your nine to five, you need to start making some sacrifices. Can you reduce your student loan monthly bill? I don't know. Can you reduce your car insurance? Can you switch phone plans? Can you get braids, right? And get braids every three months. Can you fall back from getting your lashes done? Can you stop going out to eat so much? How many subscriptions do you have coming out? Guys, I'm a part of so many online communities and they're very helpful, let me just say. But when it comes to me locking in, I can't pay for everybody's membership. I can't pay to be a part of everybody's community. So which ones are giving me the, the most ROI? Last one, set a quick timeline and transition gradually. This is one of my favorite um, pieces of advice to share, especially with my family and friends. Making sure that you have established clear goals on how much you need to make a month and for how long for you to be able to peacefully, calmly, responsibly exit your nine to five, but also what does that gradual shift look like? So um, as your side hustle income increases and you start to gain more clients, um, what does that transition out look like? Because for some of us, 
you may be able to and this is what i'm doing now you may be able to freelance full-time have a remote job full-time that isn't so demanding meaning you're remote you don't have a lot of meetings you're not micromanaged you don't have too much responsibility you're able to multitask and do both and you can be milking your nine to five check and still growing your business on the side so sometimes when i talk to my friends the biggest thing is like oh, i don't want to work for anybody i don't want to work for anybody but is it the fact that you don't want to work anybody or you just haven't found the perfect sweet spot in the corporate space for you to still be able to execute and thrive in what you're good at be a part of a team still being able to travel still being able to feel like you're in charge of your time still being able to serve clients but you're not micromanaged and you're not extremely stressed and, and your stress levels aren't so high I feel like that is the new American dream, but if you are someone where you're just set, right, on not working from anyone and not having a nine to five, I get it, I commend you, I'm proud of you, but if you're going to do that, then let's figure out what that looks like and what that needs to feel like, what the numbers need to be in order for you to gradually exit out last thing is those routines right those daily habits that's what's going to help you get to your goals a lot faster so while you are working your nine to five do you need to wake up an hour earlier do you need to stay up later do you need to use that time during lunch do you maybe need to find a new job where you have a little more time freedom and you have a little more wiggle room to be able to work your business at the same exact time or do you need to be waking up on Saturdays and Sundays and still clocking in that way you're kind of spreading your work out so instead of having a five-day work week you have a seven-day work week but you have more hours to dedicate to your actual business because you're multitasking at the same time I've done that before too so I hope this video helps um, that is definitely my advice if for 2025 you want to exit your nine to five take it from me. Um, I'm so proud of you. If you're watching this video, I think you're already on the right track and feel free to comment below and let me know if you've ever tried these strategies before. How do you feel after watching this video and what's the plan? Good luck guys and I'll talk to you soon.